Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and it is a second consecutive day of competitive historic brawl here on the channel because you psychos on Patreon actually tied the vote between Shauna and Sheldred. So you get Sheldred Saturday. How about that alliteration? Are you are you impressed by my title? You get the most competitive Sheldra the Apocalypse Dominaria Historic Brawl Commander uh, build that I can come up with. So this is a super popular commander. Everybody has been into Sheldra the Apocalypse. It's making waves throughout several constructed formats of magic. And it's also proving to be very powerful because it has some combos in Historic Brawl that can just outright instant on the spot win the game. The cards you need to know about the most are Peer into the Abyss. If you have Sheldred on the battlefield and you target your opponent with Peer into the Abyss, they're probably going to they're going to lose half their life to Peer into the Abyss, then they're going to lose about 60-70 more life to Sheldred the Apocalypse. They're dead. So this deck definitely takes advantage of that by trying to set up a one-turn kill shot with Sheldred the Apocalypse and Peer into the Abyss is often as reasonable. Other cards that can have a similar effect are Eldritch Pact. This is seven mana and target player draws X and loses X, where X is the number of cards in their graveyard. Not as reliable as Peer into the Abyss, but very good at getting the job done. And it's important to have multiple options for this effect to run some of the other cards that we run. Then the next one is Lich's Mastery. This is a combo with Sheldred because it says that whenever you gain life, you draw that many cards. So whenever we draw a card, we gain life and we draw cards that cause us to gain life, which causes us to draw cards. Lich's Mastery, with Sheldred on board, is a combo that once you draw one card, you will draw your entire deck. You will draw your entire deck, and you won't lose the game for it, because it says right there on the enchantment that you can't lose the game. So, uh, once you have your whole deck, there are various ways to win. You can peer into the abyss your opponent. If you have a reliquary tower that you can drop that turn, you don't have to discard. And it's actually really important that you not make your land drop the turn you start this. Because if you do, and you don't play your reliquary tower, there is a very good chance that just from animations and triggers, your turn will time out and you will discard your win cons. Just something to think about if you're gonna go for this combo. Do watch the video. We get to show it off in the video in its entirety, so that's a good tease to watch the show. The rest of the deck, is it started out, you might ask about a few cards like Underworld Dreams and uh, the Obnixilis that damages you from taking, that damages your opponents for drawing cards. You might ask about those cards. And I would say, you know what? I thought those were good cards in the deck too, but they all got removed. And the reason why is because Shelter the Apocalypse has the, I guess, curse you could say, of being placed in not quite Hell Q, but right below Hell Q. Sheldred goes up against really tough competition. Sheldred has a lot of games against the likes of Heliod, a lot of games against Niv, Mizzet, Perun, which feels like such an unwinnable, exhausting matchup. A lot of matchups against Omnixilis, a lot of mirrors, and a lot. Every now and then you get paired up against like those super Hell Q commanders. So Sheldred has a tough draw and plays against some of the best commanders in the game. The problem with Sheldred in those matchups is that Sheldred herself is not a value engine. She gains life and she makes opponents lose life, but she doesn't draw cards. And the opponent's commanders, for the most part, can generate a ton of value, which means that they bury you in cards. They kill your Sheldred three or four times, you can't cast her anymore, and then you die. And if you have cards in your deck like Underworld Dreams that don't generate more value and just sit on the battlefield hoping to pair with your commander, you get drowned out of the game. So the rest of the deck is committed to having as many value engines as possible to make up for the fact that we don't have card advantage in the command zone. That's why you see all the treasure maps and thematic compass and Bank Buster. That's why you see Phyrexian Arena and you also see Black Market Connection. That's why you see Cosmos Elixir, Alchemy Edition, uh, along with many other cards. If you want a complete breakdown of all the cards in the deck going one by one, check out the live stream uh, that I'm doing here. The VOD is available to members only so you can get an in-depth take on all the cards in the deck as well as some questions from chat over what cards I didn't include and why. Today's video is dedicated 
donated to Criminal412, who is a patron on Patreon at the shout out tier. Thank you very much for your support. And despite your name slightly intimidating and concerning that you would just own it like that, uh, at least for being one of my patrons, you're very cool. Now, let's dive in. Let the competitive historic brawl shelter the apocalypse nonsense begin. All right, we are up against Tetiova, the lands matter rampathons. We have some land that matters ourselves in the stronghold. We also have a bunch of tutors. This hand isn't going to interfere with them very much. It's not even going to kill Tatiova very well, but it might go like it might be able to do a Sheldred here into the abyss combo very quickly. And if they don't have the counter spell or the removal, they could be in a lot of trouble. So we'll keep it. Our main fear is that they ramp too fast. If they ramp too hard too fast, we'll be in trouble. Ooh, do I have to get something to kill that? I think I do. Not exactly how I wanted to set this up, but um, let's thought seize them. Let's see what's going on. I have a lot of ramp creatures and not a ton of land. What the hell does this even do? Okay. Fine with that. They have no removal and no counter spells. They have no removal and no counter spells. What is a thing they could do that would really wreck us? The Vorinclex is the most threatening thing. I think I'm take I, I think I take the card draw though, honestly, because it helps them hit the lands. I think this is the take. We just don't want them to get deeper because their hand isn't that threatening. And this Cobra will just take that and slow them down. They can go fetch with the Wishclaw Talisman, but I mean, that kind of costs them a mana. The Druid, okay. We play the Shieldred. End game approacheth, guys. One thing that's kind of scary is if they play the Vorinclex and pass us the Talisman, because then we can't put counters on it. Oh no, it says remove a counter. Never mind. It's fine. Vorinclex doesn't let us put things counters on. It doesn't care if we take them off. All right, this thing is here. What does this do? XL the top X, put study, you may blah, 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 words, yeah, yeah, whatever. Tutor. All right, opponent. You get one turn, make it count. But whatever you do, opponent, tap out. I, I want to feel really secure going for this. There you go. There you go. Play the big G unit. Play the big Gelargaroth and then kiss it all goodbye. It just feels so giddy. It just... <laughs> Evil. Heliod, the Sun Crowned, is our opponent. Very aggressive white deck. Feed the Swarm doesn't stop Heliod. Lich's Mastery. They could run farewell, but for the most part, they probably don't have many ways to stop Lich's Mastery. I guess we'll try this hand. It has removal. It doesn't have any card draw, which makes me super nervous. Until we get the mastery down, of course. They usually run some cards like Swords to Plowshares, but they don't have that much removal for Shieldred most of the time. Now 
Oh no, they brought the space lands. Terrifying. All right, let's just push this. If we draw like a treasure map, we want to play it. Or a sign in blood, that works. Thought distortion, wrong matchup. Not a good draw. Now they've got the priest. Yeah, they're they're doing the life gain thing, aren't they? But we're slowing it down. Next plan, drop Shieldred. Hope it lives. Try to find our way to mastery. Don't exile it. Paragon. Ooh, they get to start casting stuff from their graveyard? That's gross. I guess we'll fill our graveyard and maybe we'll even hit something to play, but I doubt it. Yep. Ah, it's a tough game right now. Let's give them the business. I'm sur Oh, they are getting the bounty. I was going to say I'm surprised they didn't get bounty, but they did. We don't have... So this is a lot of damage. A lot of damage to play a Lich's Mastery into. What do we have in hand to get rid of? I guess it doesn't matter. We can get rid of our whole hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's enough to play the Mastery. Okay. And that's why we filled our graveyard last turn with the uh, cycle, even with nothing in it. All right, please don't kill Sheldred. Please don't kill Sheldred. Please don't kill Sheldred. Please don't kill Sheldred. Command tower in the mono deck, classic. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life, it just a lot of text. And then over here we have, whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. So if we can just not die here, we're taking 11. We got to take it. So that's, it's whenever you lose life for each one life lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. So we have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. We'll have five lands. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ouch. But let the combo begin. And for those who aren't sure what's about to happen, we're going to draw our entire deck. We will not lose the game from this because Lich's Mastery says that we do not lose the game. We will draw Dark Ritual because it's in our deck. And then we will cast the Dark Ritual. We will cast the Peer into the Abyss targeting the opponent and they will die. It's just gonna take a while. So in the meantime, I'm gonna hang out here with all of you and just have a nice, calm, relaxing time. The biggest risk to us winning this game now, the, the moment of actual suspense, the real, the real problem that we're facing is that the arena client doesn't recognize all these triggers as game actions. And what that means is the rope is going to start soon. If the rope runs both our timeouts and hits zero, it's going to pass the turn. It's going to make us discard down to hand size, discarding almost everything that we drew. Our opponent will untap and swing with everything and we will lose the game. Just something to think about. That could happen. And there it is. So all these triggers, just waiting for these to resolve, to draw our deck so that we can actually cast one of the spells, two of the spells that we drew, is going to be the new suspense. All right, here's the Dark Ritual. We're going to hold on to it because we need to throw this on the stack as soon as we possibly can. As you see, the animations are starting to speed up. Maybe holding a card actually makes them go faster, and I should have done this the whole time. I didn't think about that. But of course, you know, why wouldn't I? Isn't that how the client works?
<laughs> the opponent, I think, is clicking as they go because they have an Alcide and a mana open. <laughs> Firmly, we're going to cling to this Dark Ritual. We're going to cling to it and try to throw it on the stack the second this library is empty. The problem is I can't see where the library is at anymore. That's a little tilting, I've got to be honest. Now, here's the thing. Once the library is empty, it's not over. Once the library is empty, all these triggers have to resolve. Okay, the library is empty. Go triggers. Go triggers. Go triggers. Go triggers. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. Now, some people say because you have Lich's Mastery tech and you gain all this life, technically you're fine even if you time out. You're not fine if you discard all your win cons. And since you have no say in what gets discarded when your timer runs out, that can happen. That can absolutely happen. <laughs> go, baby. Go, baby. Go, baby. Go. 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 Are we done? Are we there? We're there. Do I get to... Come on. Let me... Okay. We play a thing. Find the pier. Find the pier. Find the pier. We totally got this. We 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 got this. Pew. Pew. Should have played around mana tithe. That would have been funny. 169. That's a nice. And that's game! And the sound bug on the client bugs out. And we have once again taken best of one arena to the absolute maximum. Ah yes, the mirror match. What dreams are made of. The thing that every magic arena player wakes up hoping they get to do. We'll keep it. We've got a Price of Fame, probably the best Doom Blade effect to use on our opponent's Sheldred. Time to extract some truth out of you. It's a good hand, and they have the mastery, which can be game over, and I don't have a way to remove. The most value value in the hand is the Eldest Reborn. But the mastery is such a threat. That said, if I'm letting their Sheldred live, I'm losing anyway. So I think we let them keep it. And I think we take the Eldest Reborn. I think the uh, Nightmare is also going to tag the mastery. Probably. So let's tag this for now. And hopefully they play that Ornithopter. Yep, right into our clutches. They're falling directly into our trap. Treasure map's a good one. That is a good one. Bankbuster or mastery, guys? Bankbuster is super mana intensive, but it's a lot of long-term value. Mastery is a potential win the game combo. I feel like if I make them keep the expensive card that only combos with their commander that I can punish them. So I will take the buster. Right now they have fatal push. They don't have a way to get revolt. We should be clear to play Sheldred. Arena. Oh, okay. I was really hoping I had pinned them down to play Sheldred there. But they got the arena. That's pretty good. Let's see if they discard that push or not. They discard the mastery. And the push. Okay, that means we can Field of Ruin the Cabal Stronghold. We could also save the Field of Ruin for the treasure map. This is going to hurt them really bad. 
but they're getting ahead in cards. We're not. It's kind of a problem. They have two value engines. We have zero. We just have to hope they die before they get to really use them. Uh, huh. I wonder what chapter they'll use. Let's see. They're going to chapter one. Good. That's a whiff. That's a whiff. Not only that, they don't have the mana to use their map this turn, which I thought for sure they would have activated their map. So they're in big trouble. This is going to be a fast pace. Demonic bargain. Demonic bargain. So they're going to lose three life to this. What if I hit them with a sign in blood? They're at 10. They're at eight. They're at four. They're at dead. Easy. All right, don't exile sign in blood. Bingo. Burn mode activated. Yeah, go ahead, kill it. You're still gonna lose three to the cruelty. That damage stacks up fast. Our opponent is playing Obnixilus the Adversary, which is a very terrifying commander, but we're on the play. We have a card advantage engine in the Bloodfast. Unfortunately, it does hurt a lot to use, and Obnixilus hurts a lot. We do have two removal spells. That's important because usually these decks have one drops and two drops, and then they try to sack Obnixilus. So we can use these to try to fend off their early creatures and make Obnixilus a lot less threatening. Cursebound Witch. Oh, I hate killing that, but I think we do. We have to kill everything because Obnixilus turns it all into a second Planeswalker. It's a... It's, mm. Oh, I hate killing the Witch with a removal spell. I really hate that. Oh, we got a little ramp. We got a little ramp. Want it as a cauldron that they got off the witch, probably. Do they have another creature? If they don't have a creature, we get a turn off from double ob, which is huge. Are we going to spend it casting Sheldred? Or are we going to spend it casting Bloodfast and drawing cards? We have blood on the snow. If we get to four snow covered swamps, Sheldred's a lot better. Let's do it. Let's go. Make them deal with it. Make them deal. It also takes them off their game plan. If they spend their turn killing Sheldred, they don't spend their turn getting a creature down to them pair with Obnixilus. Love these tap lands from the opponent. Okay, they didn't kill Ob. Wow. Well, you take those, you prepare for the worst, but when good things happen, you can't be too mad. So what's our bargain? I think I know what our bargain is. I think I know exactly what you get against Ob. And we'll get this down. Opponent hasn't done anything, and it's weirding me out, man. It's weirding me out. Like, do I want to play this when my opponent might have removal for it? But then they don't kill Sheldred, so yeah, I guess we drop it. Opponent, do something. This game has to be interesting. I'm trying to make content here. You made one ones, but you didn't block? Oh, please, please, opponent. Please don't tell me you're going to play Ob now. Oh, please don't tell me you made those on end step so you can sack one to Ob and then block for Ob. 
Please no. That's what they did. That is a hundred percent what they did. <laughs> and then they remember the immortal sun means that's not going to work. We're up against Tatiova from Murica. And the thing about Tatiova, you really want doom blade effects to kill her. We don't have any, but we're on the play. So we usually have about three or four turns before we have to be ready to kill her. And we do have a tutor and a sign in blood. So I think we'll get there. Let's keep. I sign my life away for a swamp and an ornithopter of paradise. I got scammed. I thought I was getting a free PC and I got an ornithopter of paradise on turn three. Wah, wah, wah. Still not bad. I don't usually run mana rocks in Tatiova because I just run more land because she's only good with land drops. Imagine drawing a Mind Stone when you really, if you drew a land, you draw a card. But, you know, a lot of people run Mind Stone in everything. They said go. Counterspell? Counterspell gaming? Well, I have no way to double spell. Should I just make the best play I can and hope they don't counter it? Okay. Well, at least they didn't get to use Supreme Will to look at their top three and pick some awesome card and destroy me with it. We have that going for us. Sometimes you gotta go for it. Speaking of that, will they play Tatiova without a land drop? Wow. Punished. <laughs> Absolutely wrecked for that one. Love it. So what's that tell us about their hand? They don't have a bunch more lands, but they also don't have good interaction. Their hand is probably not great. Do we play our commander Sheldred or do we play Cosmos Elixir? The sooner we get Sheldred down, the more pressure they're under. That's for sure. Let's go for shield. Let's go for Shelly. Shelly is also a decent offset for Tatiova. At least they do at least lose one life for every land they play. Dryad. And they did have another land. Okay. Wow. I can't believe they didn't do this play that last turn if they had the option. Now they might be holding up interaction. I pressure your life total. We can't go for Hive because they have Ghost Quarter up. Otherwise, that would have been a pretty cool way to keep the pressure on. I'm going to attempt this Mind Stone. I'm going to attempt this Grim Tutor to see if we can just win next turn when they tap out for Tatiova. Resolves. Hello? Seems fun. Do it. Play your commander, and you will know pain in all of its forms. Unless they have two lands and a counter spell. But they let the Grim Tutor resolve, so maybe they don't. Okay. I can see a lot of cards. Uh huh. I could really use a thought seize off the top deck. I'm getting nervous. Uh huh. Keep going. Don't let me stop you. Oh, is that a forest? Well, I guess it can tap for mana of any color. Could still be a swan song. Uh, okay. 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 You got a wash away in your hand, and you tapped out. Can we get a WWE style chant? You tapped out. You tapped out. You tapped out. You tapped out. 
You tapped out. So you like drawing cards, do you? <laughs> Good night. Our opponent is on Rafine, the Scheming Seer. They usually come out fast and furious. This hand might be really slow. This, again, is not a matchup where Karn is particularly good. This hand is really iffy. Obviously, we love Invoke Despair, but if the opponent has three or four creatures on board when we cast it and they're pumping with Rafine, it doesn't do anything. So we're going to take the mulligan. We really want some removal and some ramp. Well, Extract the Truth gets in their hand. If they play an enchantment, we can kill it. We have Peer for the combo, which probably won't help us much. If we ramp into Sheldred, that is very good against Rafine. They usually have to remove Sheldred first, so let's keep. Because Sheldred versus Rafine, they take a lot of damage to do their conniving. No one drop, love to see that. Pretty hard to do from a three color deck, but it's been done to me. Okay, they've got a Skyclave Shade. Do we play the Sheldred? If they take their turn to remove it, are we unhappy? We could extract the truth and sign in blood, but then they can untap play Rafine and they have full reign over the board. I think we go for Sheldred. We don't want them to get to drop Rafine and start attacking and conniving the Shade. And if they don't have removal, we're in a pretty happy spot. Rafine. Okay, they went there. That's another good reason to do it, because sometimes you just frickin' win. That's why. Sometimes you draw three mana at instant speed for one mana off the top of your deck, and your opponent dies on turn four. That is a thing that can happen. That is... That is Historic Brawl. Niv. Niv is the absolute scourge of this deck. It's the toughest matchup. You get it all the time. They have so much card advantage in their command zone and so much interaction. I mean, it, it takes a lot to win. And we're on the draw. This hand is okay. We're going to try it. But this is... Ooh, this is a tough matchup. Sometimes they just body you. I think I'm going to put Niv, Mizzet, Perun on the next uh, Patreon poll for a commander, though. We got lucky. Our opponent played Goblin Electromancer, so our removal is good. A little unlucky that we didn't get to cast our card draw spell, but we would have had to discard anyway. They have Expressive Iteration. Ugh. So good. What a card. Hopefully their 100 card deck, they just don't have any land. That would be nice. That would give us a shot. Oh, never mind. Easy snarl. They even flex. They got another land in hand. All right, let's see if this arena resolves. Extra cards can go a long way. Red and blue has trouble with enchantments. For black, the weak spot is artifacts. For red, blue... The weak spot is enchantments. They're not as afraid of artifacts, that's for sure. But we'll see if this map can come down. If it does, that's probably all we'll do. So we can start activating it. We're going to need some removal for Niv eventually, though. Anticipate. Get to stack their deck nice and tidy for their dragon. There's also a combo in the Niv deck. If they get out Niv and Curiosity, they just win by, you know, as soon as they draw a card. Because it just triggers itself. Basically, they draw their deck and kill you with it. Bargain. It's definitely better than a random draw, so let's take it. Connections. Okay, we've got a lot of these enchantments going. I might kill myself trying to outvalue the opponent. 
but then I'll die happy. And at some point, they'll probably use counter spells on these. We gotta get them to play their counter spells. Yep, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Means they don't even lose any tempo if they have a card draw effect this turn. Let's keep activating the map though and try to get it flipped before they draw a removal for it. Tap land, no Niv. Okay. We really need to get set up to kill a Niv. That's just that that'll that'll work. That'll work. We're gonna flip the map. Part of me says we should go for the bargain or just have the talisman down. Uh, we can also go for the sign in blood here. Why not? Get more options. Maybe we'll be able to attack their hand. Bolt bend. Change the target of target spell with a single target. <sighs> nice. Nice. <laughs> oh, my soul. Will they play Niv here? If they do, we have to be able to grasp it. But I guess we can by activating the treasure map. Let's go for Demonic Bargain. If this resolves and that we don't exile Thought Distortion, it's one of our ways in. And it's still there. So we lost Inquisition, Gonti, Grim, Lolth. This is all fine. I haven't been bolt bended in a minute. But that is the kind of card where the opponent's like, I play that with one mana open with my Niv and I'm in a good position. Now they might not be willing to do it. Oh, that card is really good in this deck too. Every time they play a spell, they make a treasure. Where's my Karn when I need it? Not there. Shatter, Ritual. Shatter and Ritual. I mean, it's getting pretty close to being able to try to combo them, right? They might make a few treasures from this, but they won't have any spells when all's said and done. Can't be countered. Reveal your hand, exile all non-creature non-land. From the hand and the graveyard. <gasps> Lazatep plating. They gain hexproof? No. No. I can't, can't believe they got out of that. All right, what do we do? What do we do? God, Niv is frustrating. It's so painful. If we have this down though, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. In theory, we can do it all in one turn. In theory, we can go get Peer into the Abyss, play Sheldred and kill them, but we've got to run them out of interaction and they've got four cards in hand and they're probably going to put Niv on the stack. It, drawing like a thought seize would be epic. And I wasn't even counting the treasures because I think I'm going to use them here. Primal Amulet. God damn. Maybe we can just get them to tap out though. Maybe they, maybe they love their storm kiln artist 
set up with Primal Amulet too much. Oh god, do we do this? To pay the quench? I think we try to get them to spend their mana. Yeah, I think it's the best way. And spend their counters. We gotta get rid of their counters. We can't beat all those counters. Yeah, okay. I mean, we did it, kinda. We did something. They got two cards left. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Be good to me. Blood on the snow. I think they really want to try to play the Niv next turn. And if we can resolve the blood on the snow, we're golden, right? Just got to run them. They got to run out of counter spells. If they have two more counter spells in hand, there's not much we can do. But if, if we run them out of them, we have a chance. Okay. They have defended that storm killer and it's because they know it can just win them the game. We gotta hope this is their last counter here. Bone crusher, huh? A lot of treasure, but the artist is gone and there's no counter spell. Let's see if they slam Niv. Their primal amulet's on three. They play nothing. They play nothing. We gotta get it back while we know we can. All right. Is their top card a spell that draws cards? They really need a card draw spell. They go for Niv. They pass the turn. We draw nothing. What do we do? We could go for the win. If they drew another counter spell, just straight raw drew a counter spell off the top. We're dead. What do we do? We can't, we have nothing else that we can claw for that can't be countered. We can claw for Karn. Uh, it would shut down the treasures. We can Karn for Eldest Reborn. I think we got to try. I, I have a bad feeling, but I think we have to try. If this misses, we lose. 
We lose the game. The other thing we could do is get mastery. If we resolve the mastery here and draw with the uh, castle locked lane, but then we don't have the reliquary tower. Let's go for the win. Make them have it. They got to draw it off the top. Either with their last top deck or with this one. A hard counter. The only choice. You could also kill the Sheldred. My God. My God, they are amazing. They are much better at magic than me. Oh. Will they give the Wish Claw back, though? They just go get a time walk here, and they double it, and they should win, right? Easy. Let's go get time warp. They don't. Wow, we've drawn three, four straight land. Five, six, if you count what we put on the bottom. It's heartbreaking, man. It's so heartbreaking. Nope. Can't do it. Can't do it. Rematch. Niv, you're going down this time, dragon. I got a lot of frustration to take out on poor Gerald Oliver here for running this absolute demon of a commander. So mull. Mull, you coward. Mull to oblivion. Gambit. That's going to take forever. Don't care. Teferi. Eh. Baral. Gross. But Shadow's Verdict, removal. I'm taking your brainstorm. I want you to get mana screwed. That's what I want. All right, do I take the card? Let's cry. I don't really want to use Soul Shatter on Brawl, but I will if I have to. I also do want the land, so we'll take it. All right, get out. Get out, you little critter. No way you're getting cost reduction on your spells. All right, mana, screw. Nope. They found a land. They found a land. All right, we're probably going to draw with Tome for a few turns if they're going to hold up mana. Or are we going for Sheldred? Ah, let's hold Tome. The cards could be important. Let's put it to him. Did you draw a counter? Prismari Command? Not a counter. I think we've got enough mana now. My poor Tome, though. Alright, we really actually need Soren to do some card advantage work. We're going to get run out of the building. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, hmm. What could they play that would make me shuffle? Ghost Quarter? It would have to be Ghost Quarter. And what kind of a Niv deck would run a Ghost Quarter? None. No Niv deck would run Ghost Quarter. Because then they have so much trouble casting their Niv. Okay. It is now my job not to activate this Field of Ruin. <laughs> All right, Niv is safely back in the hand, no longer in the library where it can get shuffled away. Life is good. It takes 
takes impressive knowledge to be a temporal archmage. Time to improvise. Wow. They got rid of Swan Song and kept Alchemist Gambit. They are a believer. Okay, that's a lot of land. We can stop with the land. Right? Uh, okay. I am glad you let this resolve first. That's cool. You discard and negate. That's cool. <laughs> I like this opponent. Keep it going, buddy. Keep it going. Getting you down to zero is, is hard work. So all, I need all the help I can get. They do have to get Soren off of lethal, and it's coming. We'll take the victory. Man. Man. Did you have to be so soft? At least, at least cast your Alchemist Gambit and see if your Teferi in response to the game ending trigger can draw you a Tail's End. Come on, dude. And we are back for the post game wraps on C. HB Shieldred. And I actually played a ton of games with this deck. Uh, 40 wins and 19 losses. So you actually get a larger sample size than normal. Would have loved to close it out on a 69% win rate, but came up short at 67%. The deck is definitely able to win and get you your dailies, but it, I wouldn't classify it in the high performers of Historic Brawl. It's in particular a victim of its Q. It plays in a higher Q than I think it truly deserves. And maybe that's because of the play experience of playing against it. Taking damage or losing life for drawing cards is a frustrating experience for many newer players, many players in general. And because of that, uh, I think that they put Sheldred in a higher queue where it constantly has to play against very powerful commanders, including Niv. You get a lot of Niv. You also get a lot of Heliod. You see we have nine games against Heliod, and we have ten games also against Mono Black. So you get the Mirror, of course, a lot. That's just another matchmaking feature of MTG Arena. Obnixilis is the common Rakdos commander, but you also play against Tybalt or Valky, God of Lies, pretty often. So all in all, um, it's a pretty tough commander to run into this queue because most of those commanders draw cards or generate advantage from the command zone, whereas Sheldred, most of what it generates is life loss and life gain, which means that you really have to find a way to gain that card advantage back, and not all your draws will do that. Still, a lot of people love Sheldred, and because of that, it's going to be a very popular commander, so you may as well have the best build possible, which I think we're providing here today. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the competitive Historic Brawl content, make sure to leave some comments and likes on this video. Consider becoming a Patreon where you can vote on which Com which commander I build around next week, and also consider joining where you get access to the stream VODs where I do the in-depth deck text for the commanders. So thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. You're cool. Cheesy grin!